Is Little Nightmares 2 a comment on society or the twisted dream of a young child? Are we the ones trapped by the broadcast in a Matrix-style world looking for Neo? I kept running into more questions than I had answers, despite the game being short, of blending an eerie experience within a Tim Burton-like atmosphere. Every scene had little details that told a broad narrative of what happened to those affected by the transmission. However, the gameplay barely wanders from the original Little Nightmares, but there was enough added to make it unique from its predecessor. And just so you know, the series can be played in any particular order. The game starts with a short cutscene of a hallway leading to a mysterious door with an eye, but switches to a boy waking up in front of a TV with a fading broadcast. I wondered if he was hypnotized, transported, or was the situation more like Tasi from Amnesia Rebirth? Just like his face, that answer is never fully revealed. He escapes oversized traps while wandering through the woods until he trespasses in a lonely and decrepit house. This is where he finds Six, locked in a basement with only her music box as company. It was really sad, she didn't even have a bed. What was the plan for that little girl anyways? Were they gonna eat her? Was she being punished for something? Without ever mentioning a word, the two team up. The quietness adds to the mystery and most of this game is communicated visually, which is refreshing because it leaves us to fill in the blanks. As they ventured into the city, my list of questions grew longer. Luckily, the gameplay was not complicated. It allowed for further immersion into the nightmarish experience. There were only slight changes to the mechanics of the first game. For example, Mono can wield large items like axes and pipes especially to defend himself. He can also call out to Six, which is great since this is the first time in the series with the teamwork mechanic. But she stays pretty close so you almost never need to call her. I was slightly disappointed that I could not switch and play as her. I mean, her cannibalistic habits may have helped out in some situations. The 2.5D platforming is one of the unchanged elements, which led to some problematic sections for me. Really, the issues I had were lining up jumps because of how linear the movement was and how unforgiving the camera angles were. For example, look as I try to take out these unruly porcelain kids. They don't move very fast, but even when they stop, it takes a minute to gather up the strength to swing the adult-sized weapon. Not to mention, it is hard to judge a landing blow. But checkpoints were frequent, so I was never overly frustrated. Each section shows the designer's amazing storytelling through atmosphere and tone. No section felt copied from other parts of the game, including the sounds. My heart raced each time I heard the grotesque noises that residents made when they spotted me. There were subtle references to other horror classics through characters and mechanics. The ones that come to mind are Silent Hill for the eerie atmosphere and sounds, and you can't tell me that passing through the hunter's cabin didn't scream out Resident Evil 7. Were there any other horror game vibes that you got when you were playing Little Nightmares 2? Let us know in the comments. Every scene had visual clues that hinted at what happened before the calamity. Early on, clothes were scattered as if people were pulled directly from them. Even the actions of those twisted by the broadcast show that they are trying to cope with their new realities. I would often linger in a room just to check for every detail to see if I can find a clue to what happened. Or I would run down dark passageways, hoping to find another secret. Every detail added to the psychological horror that was being told. The distinctive environments and unique enemies had me nervous yet excited. In fact, after I finished the game, I was left with so many questions that I wanted to replay Little Nightmares 2 immediately. It's such a good thing that the game only takes around 6 hours to beat. This action-adventure game is a worthy follow-up to the first time. I still have some masks to get and questions to answer. However, like other great narratives, I may be left asking more with each playthrough. My name is Kaylee Daniels and I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time.